Welcome everyone to another episode of Five at Chintakai. Today we have with us Mr. Walid Deep from Hella Insurance. How are you doing today? Not too bad, not too bad. Thank you for hosting me. Thank you so much for coming. It's five questions. I'm going to start with a simple one. Mm -hmm. Can you please talk to us more about Hala Insurance and what you guys do? Absolutely. So I kicked off Hala Insurance with uh, my co-founders, my brother and our friend Hasha Jmeira. Um, we were not happy with how insurance worked as customers. I used to work in insurance before. Um, and I, I keep saying this always, I, I never thought it's a very sexy field to start with. But what we want to do is we want to make it such that it's tolerable and that it's on your side. Uh, for Hala today allows you to buy policies in seconds, car insurance policies, home insurance policies, and help you file claims in minutes as well. So what you basically did is you removed the unsexy from insurance and you put in the sexy. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. So I hope, right. hope that that's the, the ultimate goal that I can make something that is what is considered potentially quote unquote a necessary evil or like a tax okay. into something that's more on your side. Question number two is why FinTech Hive and how did FinTech Hive help make this dream come true? And I, I'm going to say it, and this is not an advertisement, this is legit. <laughs> I actually, uh, I had quit my job prior to joining Fintech Hive. And uh, I was just so, uh, like, not interested in what I was doing at the time. I found an ad on LinkedIn for Fintech Hive uh, while looking for another job way back when. And I applied to it, um, again, not knowing if they're going to accept us. My brother and I had just an MVP we paid a few hundred dollars for, for what the time it was a blockchain startup. Got accepted and we were mentored by the fintech hive program at the time there was it was the first uh, uh as part of our alumni we were the first to have insurtech involved so we were lucky and uh, there were five or six insurance companies on board and every single one of them became our mentor as well as a bank who later on invested in us a lot of our investors actually came through fintech hive. wow at least our seed stage investors mm -hmm. so throughout your journey you passed through a lot of obstacles and ups and downs before you take us to, to, to this journey I want to know what are achievements that you were able to do. So quite a few. I mean, I've gained weight, I've lost weight because of these <laughs> achievements and some obstacles. And I think we, we kind of fumbled our way through to success is what I keep saying. Um, one of our biggest achievements is uh, being able to pivot from a B2B blockchain startup to a B2C startup for insurance during COVID and close series A with the likes of Entre Capital and Mubadala. Wow. Uh, and I think that was like playing a game on hard mode, you know. Um, another more recent achievement, which I'm extremely proud of and was very difficult and grueling to do because we did it on our own without any kind of external help, was get our own um, insurance license from the central bank, specifically an insurance agency license, allowing us to sell insurance onshore in the UAE. Nice, mm -hmm. nice, and good luck. Thanks, man. It's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, but I'm super happy. Whenever you make any of these achievements and you share it with the team and you see like uh, a burst of joy, it feels really good. Question number four, mm -hmm. what's the future for Hella? It's interesting, man. It's a question that keeps me up at night. Uh, <laughs> not that I change my mind very often. So I have a very specific vision. I, again, I, I want to outsource people's worries. I want to be able to ensure 450 million people living here. Again, not the sexiest proposition. It's not buy now, pay later. It's not Uber. It's not, but it's something that we just feel passionately about because very few people are actually insured here in the MENA region. And to do that, there's a lot of regulation and every country has different regulations. So how will I do that? How will I become the best in class insurance company? And that's what keeps me up at night. So our vision is to eventually, I don't want to be the biggest insurance company. I want to be the best in class insurance company. I want to be what salt is for burgers here. Yeah. But to be like that for insurance across the Middle East. Uh, Big fan of salt burger, by the way. Yeah, you just made me very hungry. <laughs> but there's something that you said right now, which really I love about it. Mm. And it's something when it comes to the marketing world or marketing everything or anything, it's what's more important to be the best or to be the known best. Mm. And hopefully this is what you're trying to do. I mean, th that's a tough one, right? Because um, I think, especially in environments like the UAE or, or even KSA, there's so many people competing for um, your eyeballs uh, uh, when advertising. And a lot of people sell the sizzle without the steak. And I want to be able to do both. But sometimes you have to compromise. Are you a product-led company or are you a marketing-led company? To do both at the same time is possible, but is pretty difficult. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah. Hopefully it will happen. Yeah. Yeah. So the last question is, to everyone watching and who want to start this journey where opening their own businesses, starting their own startup, mm -hmm. what would be your advice? My advice would be, uh, and it's funny because my advice changes over time as I grow. Um, my advice before used to be trust your co-founders and listen to them when they disagree with you. My advice right now would be 
although vision matters, and I know a lot of people focus on vision, mission, and values, which is still important, what's more important than that sometimes is the market. The market will always win. So if you have an idea that is Tinder for dogs, Tim Dog, and you think it's cool and the vision is amazing, if the market doesn't really want it, it doesn't matter what your vision is. That's what happened when we pivoted from a B2B blockchain startup because I believe in the decentralization of blockchain. I had such a big uh, focus and belief on how good it can be for the masses. The reality was at that time, the market did not want it. What the market wanted was a fast way to buy insurance. And that's what we're trying to focus now. So my only advice for founders is it's cool to have a vision. It's amazing to have a vision. Don't be married to your vision if everything else is against you. Think of what the market that you're in actually wants. And also think of why am I in this market? Did I start here because I live here or because I was born here or because I think I'm addressing a serious problem for this region? But I'd say that's more or less uh, the advice I would give. So become a problem solver. Exactly. Absolutely. Easy to say, but very hard to do. Like, there's no real flow chart to do that, and I appreciate that. Uh, and, and I worry about sometimes saying these things and going like, oh, this is very easy to write, but then what do you mean? Uh, I, I appreciate that. I think I have to work on a way to kind of break that down into a deeper flow chart. It was awesome to have you. And Cheers. thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. High five? High five. <laughs> Power high five. Awesome. That's it. And cut. Cut. <laughs>